with awesome label art and delicious local beer, a great looking glass. These limited edition hashtag MD beer glasses are locally designed and decorated. Support Maryland's craft beer industry with each sip. All proceeds from the sale of these glasses directly benefit the Maryland craft beer industry and support the advocacy and promotional efforts of the Brewers Association of Maryland. Happy Friday afternoon. Thank you for tuning in for uh, another episode of Fermented Friday. This is our first post-February episode, so we very much appreciate you tuning in, whether you're watching us live this afternoon or you're watching uh, in a couple of hours or in the next couple of days. Uh, welcome. Really happy to have you here. Uh, as you all saw that really great intro that Chris Sands put together for us with the uh, glassware, our hashtag MD beer glasses are still available at beerme, B-I-E-R-M-I dot com slash store slash bam we're doing a pre-order on these place your order for these select the brewery where you want to pick them up and uh, we'll be shipping them out in about a week um once they go out to the breweries we'll send emails to everybody who's ordered and let you know the times at the brewery uh that you've selected when you can go in and pick it up so we want to thank all the breweries that are helping us with that we've got kushwa hysteria idiom mully's true respite and union pick the brewery closest to you grab a couple of glasses, 100% of those proceeds go right back to the Brewers Association of Maryland. They're going to help us continue all the hard work we do for the Brewers Association and for the state's breweries. Uh, this is a huge benefit to them. We can't have great events right now. We're waiting for everybody to become vaccinated, We're waiting for it to be safe. Um, so in the meantime, this is a way that you can show your support for the industry. So thank you very much. Uh, secondly, if you have some uh, plans for this sunny and cold weekend, uh, make sure that getting Maryland beer into your plans is part of your agenda. Visit your favorite Maryland brewery, pick up beer to go, stop by and do a curbside pickup, ask them to deliver it to you if that's what they're doing. Go in and have a beer while you're waiting. Um, just show your support for the breweries in the state. They're doing a great job keeping everybody safe. They're making awesome beers, and uh, it's really, really a great time to embrace what's going on here in this wonderful community. So thank you all for all of your support. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to be joined this afternoon by Billy from Firm Brewing Company in Gambrels. We've got a really great conversation planned. Uh, Billy's a great guy. I've been getting to know him over the last few months, and I really enjoy his company, really enjoy what he's doing here in the industry, and I'm excited to see where they are going. So uh, if you have questions for Billy or I, throw them into the comments. We'd be happy to address them. Uh, if you have comments about any vote rigging speculation, any bots that Firm might be using, you're welcome to talk about that in the comments too, and we'll get Billy right on the hot seat to have to answer those questions for you. Uh, so here's Billy. How you doing, How's brother? Doing? Good. How you doing, Jim? I'm well, man. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I just had to throw that in there. It's been a hot topic of conversation over the last few hours. Absolutely, and we love it. We love just being mentioned in the same breath as some of the great breweries that really got us to, you know, go out and start our own brewery. Um, you know, we love every single brewery and they've been nothing but supportive to get us open. So we're well, aside from opening and kind of like, I don't know, maybe the, the craziest time ever to try to open a new small business uh, with with two people at the helm of what's going on. Um, prior to that, you guys were like really building a great foundation. You were working a lot with local breweries to do some collaborative stuff to get your name out there. You met people in the industry, you gained some really good tips, you made some good friends. Tell us a little bit about that whole like pre-opening collab process and why you guys decided that that firm was a, a business that needed to exist. Yeah, so um, I've been you know, friends with a lot of people in the industry. I grew up with um, my buddy Danny owns Dawson's Liquors down in Severna Park, and uh, another friend of mine, Matt Fisher, started up Other Side. So. We spend a lot of time going to Max's and uh, uh, working, you know, helping do the collabs there and going down to Burley and bottling the collab for the uh, uh, the Belgium Fest there. And that kind of lit the spark to, uh, you know, kind of want to do our own thing. And uh, Henry and I, yeah, we, we met, uh, we had known about each other for a while, but Henry was brewing out in um colorado so we finally got a chance to meet and um you know we really wanted to look we really wanted to be involved with the community and the brewers association of maryland and every brewery as possible and we had uh luckily uh true respite crooked crab hysteria diamondback jailbreak 
all did collabs with us before we were even established. A lot of them didn't even know who we were. They're just uh, friends of ours, friends of friends. Like, yeah, we think you guys are doing something good. And they brought us in and did collabs with us before we were even established. And we can't thank them enough. And we can't wait to invite them back and host them after a long journey to get open. I muted. I'm not used to muting. Um, I, I just think it's cool off of that foundation that you laid that you now have the opportunity to kind of embrace all of those people who showed you a little bit of love, bring them into your place and uh, and continue those relationships. I think that's really valuable. Absolutely. And again, I, we can't thank him enough. Yeah, Henry wishes uh, he could be here joining us as well and gives all of his thanks for everything. All those breweries have done for us, everything BAM's done from us from the beginning. Um, He's in the back uh, brewing our uh, sour for opening day, um, kind of uh, making sure all the bots are doing their thing. But we, uh, he, he sends all of his love and thanks and tells you guys and everyone, thank you for everything you guys have done. So uh, real quick, because the, the bot questions are already coming in in the comments. Uh, can you go ahead and explain why you guys are the focus of a uh, an international uh, <laughs> technology investigation? Yeah, so obviously, uh, you know, there's a uh, March Madness happens every year, and uh, there's a big group, uh, Maryland Beer Drinkers Club, which you guys obviously just did the glass with what's in your glass, and uh, there was a March Madness created, and firm managed to pull up an upset and take down Burley Oak, which you know, just to be mentioned in the same breath of them, you know, it, we're honored. I love those guys going down there and bottling that beer. Like I mentioned was the spark that really wanted me to push to open a brewery, but a lot of people did not see that coming. And uh, we've got a lot, you know, a lot of fans and a lot of friends and family that, really want to see us succeed. And I mean, it, that's what, you know, is getting the votes and you can come see that on a Friday and Saturday. We're at capacity with a line out the door and we, our beers are doing pretty well. So even though we're just getting started out and someone mentioned, how did they, how are they, you know, up on Sapwood right now when they've released 28 beers and it's because of all the love and support from all, all of our friends and family we didn't post anything on our social on firm and we definitely don't have money for bots. We don't even have money for acoustic treatment right now. <laughs> so, uh, well, Seeger from YouTube would like to know, Billy, how much were you paying per vote? <laughs> One for three, two for five, no deals. <laughs> um, so I've got a really, uh, I've got a couple of questions kind of about how you're working with the community and what, what impact you're making in terms of uh, the, the beer consumer and enthusiast. Uh, my wife and I came out a couple of weeks ago for the first time and, you know, we we're out there in the middle of the day. And I mentioned this last week when I had uh, Brandon Skillman on, because I'm sitting there talking to my wife and in walks Brandon Skillman. And then right behind him is Kendrick. And I'm like, everybody that's got like an opinion about good beer is sitting that, that I know is sitting like right here at the bar having their little lunch. And then I see this whole crew from heavy seas come walking. <laughs> and I'm like, this is insane. Like this is going to be a gathering place for people that support good beer. So whatever you're doing is great, but I just, I want to know how you feel about that. We love it. And you know, it's great to see all the support from all the, the heavy hitters that drink beer, talk about beer, write about beer, work in the industry and, you know, we love showing them what we've done and getting all the positive input. And, you know, we have a lot to learn and everyone coming in every week, we learn something from sitting down and talking to them every time. And, uh, you know, when we started this, we, we grew up loving music, art and beer, and that's what we want to bring back to the community. And we want to use this as a platform to help the community get we have all of our art on our walls for sale from local artists. As soon as we can have music, it's going to be all local musicians and, you know, just bringing back to the community is our number one goal, whether it's beer, music, art, or just a good time. That's what we want to concentrate on. 
that's awesome. I think that's a really great way to bring all of those creative pursuits into one house and uh, let everybody experience them too. The artwork you guys had hanging on the walls. I don't know what local photographer that is that you had in there, but it was fabulous. Uh, it really set a great mood for the place. Your staff's awesome. So kudos to you for being young and having a really, really great setup so far. <laughs> Thank you for the young comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant the brewery, not you personally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's you know, it's tough to come start out, especially you know when you have so much competition and so much great breweries around here. Throw in the global pandemic on top of that, and it doesn't make it any easier. And uh, we. We've hoped for the best, and so far, it's we couldn't ask for anything better than the outpour of support and love, and we we love it. We we're having a great time. Uh, and I also wanted to acknowledge and offer you a, a public thank you for your um, contribution with Wham Bam with Crooked Crab. Uh, you and I met the first time brewing that beer at Crooked Crab uh, as part of the Brew for Bam series, and. It was great to have you guys as a brewery that wasn't yet open be involved. I think you guys were going through like some uh, walkthroughs with the county or something that day. And it was like just a great day for you because you knew things were on the horizon for Firm to be open. You're sitting there brewing this beer and you guys were so ecstatic to like help the Brewers Association. So I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, our, our pleasure. 100%. You, Jana, Kevin, everyone there. Uh, I mean, it, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for you guys. When we started this thing, you know, we're like, we're starting a brewery. Let's do it. And, you know, it's like, all right, how do we start a brewery? And, you know, I can't thank you guys enough, especially Jana and her attention to details and answering every single email that Henry and I sent within, you know, minutes sometimes you guys are the best and we love you for it and uh doing that beer with our you know next door neighbors crab was huge and i want to thank earl for getting us involved and everyone over there uh for getting us involved because we really wanted to give back to you guys after you guys gave us so much well thank you again um jana is in the comments she Put some emoji, but I can't read it from the comments. So I'm sure there's some hearts in there, Jana. Maybe she'll spell it out for us. <laughs> um, I would like to ask, you know, you're talking about how you're going to bring the community back together, all these great things you want to put up for for uh, the creative pursuit, the artwork, the music, the beer. What is the philosophy that you and Henry are bringing to the table in terms of beer? What are uh, the pursuits you want? I mean, you guys are putting out some really cool releases. You're You're really kind of... You're not really following anybody else's footprints. You're looking at what's going on in the market and and approaching those. So, yeah. So you know, um, I, I guess that all starts with uh, Henry's background. You know, um, kind of dive into that just to give you a little background on our our, our love of beer and beer styles. Uh, Henry was going to school out in University of Colorado. Boulder and he got a internship at the Brewers Association of Maryland. And then he got a job at Twisted Pine. And then the whole brew team at Twisted Pine quit after I think a couple of weeks of him working there. And you're like, Henry, can you handle this? He's like, I, I guess. Uh, his third professional batch of beer, he ended up winning a gold at the GABF. And, you know, his. The, you know, working at the Brewers Association, they put the metal over your head and it's like, all right, I think I got this. So uh, he met his uh, beautiful wife, Mari Rose, who um, runs our uh, tap room on the weekends with uh, Ryan and uh, him and Mari met and fell in love and started a family with two beautiful little girls and moved back to Maryland. And Henry got a job at Heavy Seas. At that point, I didn't know Henry. I met a bunch of his friends through music and everyone's always like, you're the beer guy, Henry's the beer guy, you guys gotta meet. So we were at uh, Fish Merriweather 2013 in the parking lot and I just met him. It's like, oh, great to meet you. Let's start a brewery. Like, he's just like, uh, wait, who are you? Like, hold on, <laughs> I'm like, my wife's pregnant. I just moved back here. Uh, but we became great friends after that. We started home brewing together, and uh, 
you know, got to see a lot of what Henry loved doing. He, uh, he does a brew, uh, we heavy with his dad, Charlie every year. Uh, that's delicious. And he loves brewing those types of styles, lagers and, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, traditional styles. And I kind of got him kind of twisted his arm. Like, all right, man, we got to get into these sours, man. Like, I love sours. I want to see what you can do with it. So we started brewing home brewing sours and uh, just like everything he does, he does a ton of research and learns everything about the style and, uh, and just killed it. And uh, we did a strawberry lime sour at, and uh, it's like, all right, you're, you're crushing it. Like, so after that, uh, you know, the whole haze craze, we, you know, kind of dialing in different stuff. Uh, at that point, Henry had moved to another brewery in Falls Church and uh, was uh, pretty much built their, built their back of house brewery, brewery from scratch and uh, was just dialing in recipes there and, you know, learning a lot about how to run a brewery uh, after leaving Heavy Seas and go into a small five barrel uh, brew house. Uh, you learn a lot from a lot of those different st uh, sizes of breweries. So we learned a lot about what we liked and what we want to offer. And in Croft and Gambrels, you know, there's uh we've got Chesapeake down the road and Crooked Crab and our friends at uh, Forward, but there's not too many breweries. So we wanted to have a lot of different styles to offer and we love lagers, love crispy boys, uh, love sours and barrel aged beers. So we started a barrel aged program. Uh, we got a lot of beers in barrels already, and those are all going to be offered for our members. So uh, we can hop into the, all those fun stuff later. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the styles that we're shooting for and kind of the, uh, just you know, hit it hit all different styles. So there's always something for someone to like. I think, uh, I think when we were all kind of catching up and getting to know each other during that crooked crab, uh, brew day, I was chatting with Henry a little bit and realized that I actually took a tour with him at twisted pine. Um, <laughs> when I was out there for GABF in 2012, <laughs> nice. You know, I was walking through Twisted Pine and did it, and he's like, because we were talking about him having worked there. So it was just a small world, you know. It's just a, it's a cool, cool thing to like bump into people years later and realize that you cross paths or had a beer together and you don't even know it. Yeah, absolutely. And Henry remembered it. He yeah. remembers everything. I'm just I'll like, wait. he's like, oh, were you at that big group that came in? And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it may not have been he remembered me, but he remembered enough details that it was great. It just like solidified the day classic henry <laughs> um yeah we were having a conversation about their uh their ghost pepper beer uh it's uh it's yeah he's what he his gold for yeah i was yeah. sitting in the audience when they got their gold for it i thought it was pretty awesome oh i'm envious i'm envious um, so uh we've got some comments coming in and we'll address those in a few minutes but back to your kind of approach to beer i like that you guys have the mentality that you want to balance henry's uh kind of passion for tradition with the knowledge that the consumer today wants some unique and exciting stuff that doesn't necessarily fit into what a traditional beer drinker would um, always appreciate. So I like that you have this kind of uh, diversity on your tap list that allows people to come in there and really get what they're after. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that, I, I, uh, I, I'm proud to say that I can, you know, offer a lot of uh, input on to what pays the bills and what people are drinking and be like, Henry, like, you know, let's do something fun and different. And, and then, you know, do something traditional like our double dry hop citra Pilsner, which is amazing that, you know, it's not necessarily the hype right now, but it is an awesome beer. And we are going to continue to be doing a lot of good crispy boys and doing a lot of stuff that not everyone is necessarily picking up on the shelves and you got to have fun with it and you got to, you know, stay true to yourself. And, uh, you know, you still got to pay the bills. You still got to have those fruited sours and those hazy boys, but 
you know, we're, we're Henry, it's Henry's brewery. It, he's the brewer. And I, I want him to do every single beer he's ever wanted to do and not give in to what's hype and what, you know, what everyone wants, you know, well, having that flexibility is great. Um, we're getting some great comments in here. Jason just said that he uh, is always looking for a nice, clean, bitter IPA. So, yeah, we uh, we just tapped an APA. It's not too bitter, but nice and clean, not hazy, lousy smarch weather for all those Simpson fans out there. And uh, we will definitely be doing some Westies and uh, we'll. Whatever you want, we'll make, Jason. There you go. That's a that's a hell of an offer right there. I would take him up on that. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about your membership program. You're not the first brewery in the state to have a membership prior to opening. Uh, it was a great, awesome opportunity, I think, for uh, a way to get your name out there and start a fundraising thing. I think your friends at Sapwood did something similar when they were starting up. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about your membership and and what your your members get out of that because uh, I understand you still have a few open positions in it, right? Yeah, we, we've been selling them. Um, so basically, uh, we kind of were running low on funds towards the end of all this, and we Imagine really that. had to, uh, you know, rely on people trusting that we were going to be a good brewery and that we were going to offer some good stuff for everyone. And uh, we're offering three different uh, levels. The 3.0, the lowest for $100, is was just shirt, hat, sticker, four uh, pints a year, and a glass. And our 2.0, which is $300, that's when we start getting into our barrel aged beers. So with the 2.0, you get all the stuff with the 3.0, and then you also get four of our barrel-aged beers and a 32-ounce Firmus. It's a, uh, a mere aluminum growler and uh, one free fill of that. And uh, then our 1.0, which is $500, is the same thing, only it includes uh, a hoodie and 12 of our barrel-aged beers a 64 ounce firmus, uh, 10% off growler fills for life and one free fill. So we think it was a great, we think it was a great offer and a lot of people took us up on it and that got us over the hump to get open. So I'm really proud of, uh, you know, all the work and due diligence that we put in to see what people would like and what people wanted, uh, from a membership. And uh, we can't wait to get these beers in bottles. We just bought our uh, Medusa. It's our uh, forehead uh, counterfill bottler. And we just got our shipment of our bottles. And we're, we tasted a – so we have four Basil Hayden barrels filled with an imperial chocolate stout with 150 pounds of Otterbein double chocolate cookies from our friends up in Otterbein in Baltimore. Great heads also fish fans, uh, 50 pounds of cocoa nibs. And then we'll be adding, uh, some rise up coffee from our friends at rise up. Uh, great people, great coffee. Then we have, uh, our friends from gray wolf distilling down in St. Michael's gave us uh, some housewarming gifts of two of their rye whiskey barrels. And we filled those and we'll be, do that'll be, you know, a four way Maryland collab. So we'll have gray wolf, Otterbein, Rise Up, and Firm. So that's about as Maryland as you can get for a beer. So we're really excited to get, package those and get those into our members' bellies as well. Uh, we have a Saison, uh, Belgium Saison with pink pepperberries that we will be adding apricots, peaches, and nectarines from our friends at Milburn Orchards. Uh, you might know Milburn Orchards because uh, Sapwood uses a lot of their uh, – fruit and uh we love sapwood and we love the beers they do so and we love greg over at uh milburn orchards and uh we're really excited to get a nice partnership going with them and get some local fruit into our beers and then uh right now we have a marshmallow rise up coffee stout on tap that we also have aging in two uh basil hayden bourbon barrels as well 
So we got a lot of fun barrels. We've got two barrels in the back that our friends from Dawson's brought up from uh, Ragged Brand Ragged Mountain Branch uh, Distilling down in Virginia, and uh, we're gonna be filling that with a doppel and uh, doing something a little different. So. If uh, you're looking for bar good barrel aged beers, that's the only way to get them right now from uh, from our our membership program. That's awesome. So those are going to be exclusive to the bottles. They're not going to be available on draft. Nope. That's great, man. Yeah. Um, and you still have uh, membership opportunities available for people who are tuning in that may want to come over and and invest in what's going on there. Yeah, we uh, were at about 50% capacity for those, for the uh, 1.0s and the 2.0s, which are the only memberships that offer the barrel-aged beers, and they're selling fast. And we think we just tried the beers. Uh, they've been sitting for two months, and uh, we just uh, tried them the other day, and they're tasting delicious. Uh, we think another month or two for the uh, Imperial Chocolate, and maybe three months we'll get into like the summer make sure the fruits are looking tasty and then get into those so they're coming that's awesome uh um, those members wondering they're coming is that an annual membership or is that something that's one time and you're done that's an annual membership oh that's great so you do have plans to be releasing multiple barrel releases annually yes yes so we will do uh, a membership and then we will offer up the membership for 2022 to our previous members first. And then wh whoever doesn't take us up on that offer, then we will offer it up to the public. That's great. I think you have a, uh, a plant here. Matt's asking about when you think you're putting your beers into distribution. There might be what some, up, Matt? some so, yeah. uh, interest there, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Matt Flisher runs uh, Other Side Beverage. Uh, we met uh, out at the fish, seeing the fish from Vermont at the Gorge in uh, Washington State. Uh, there's a uh, website called Cash or Trade where you can find tickets to fish concerts for face value so you're not getting gouged. And uh, I just went on the website and uh, – swiped right on that and uh to get some uh tickets to tahoe and we met uh next to the further bus and i was like hey you got a 410 number are you from maryland he's like yeah I, you know i i were he was working for legends at the time and i was like oh like one of my best friends danny cipriano owns dawson's he's like that's one of my biggest accounts and We've been great friends ever since, and uh, we knew when we started this that we would be going to other side. Uh, their portfolio is amazing. They're crushing it, and they're just doing everything they can to help us. Um, Matt's been a wealth of information throughout this entire process to the point where he's known around the brewery as the Oracle. <laughs> so we uh, we're, we just got uh, – we're just we're still trying to uh, fill our lines here, but we just got a grant from the state of Maryland, and we use that grant money to get a twenty-five barrel fermenter. So we're going from fifty barrels of fermenter space to seventy-five barrels within the first quarter of being open. So at that point, we're hoping that we can get a lot of beers out to everyone in Maryland and Delaware, and uh, to everyone who's been emailing and texting and writing from all the accounts. Uh, I, I'm trying to get you beer as soon as possible. I promise. That's awesome. And uh, it's great to have a great ally in your wholesaler. That works out very well. Absolutely. They're the best. We love everyone there. Casey, Sean, even Andrew, <laughs> especially Andrew. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what you have going on this weekend. You announced earlier today on uh, a couple of places that you've got a pretty strong lineup of new beers coming out. You mentioned their names, but let's talk a little bit about each of those beers and uh, what, what you're trying to hit in terms of uh, consumer interest and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, we, we did an APA when we first opened, descended from APAs, and uh, it was – it was a hit and everyone loved it and it sold out pretty quick. So we just released our second APA lousy smart weather. Uh, and it is tasting delicious right now. Um, it's going to be a tap room only beer. Uh, we do have 
growlers and crowlers to go for that. And it's a uh, 5.8% with um, Idaho seven Simcoe and mosaic. And the only way to taste that is to come in and try it. Um, it but uh, it, it's good. Trust me. Sorry, I'm still here. I've got a lot of buttons to make this thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, um, so lousy smart weather is uh, is kind of like right up my alley. That's the beer that I would be banging down your door for. I like mm -hmm. that, that nice hot presence, something that's uh, quaffable and uh, is going to make me feel like I'm having a great tasty beer. So that one sounds like a good one. Oh, yeah, great nose on it too. Um, our next one that we just released is our first milkshake IPA. We did a uh, collab with Annapolis Ice Cream Company and uh, Always Ice Cream out of Annapolis. Uh, I grew up eating their ice cream, we, going to get sushi at Joss and always going right across the street and getting the pumpkin pie ice cream. And we love what they do. So uh, we're really happy to be able to work with them uh, for our first milkshake IPA. Uh, we added peaches, apricots, and mangoes. And it's sitting at six and a half percent. And, uh, you know, it's just a hazy milkshake IPA with everyone's favorite or least favorite milk sugar. So uh, that's also we have four packs to go for that. And we have it on draft right now. I think you've got some friends in the chat who are planning on being there today. Mikey Straub says he's going to swing by for the uh, scoop. So oh, what up, Mikey? Good, good what stuff. Up, you may hear people banging on your office door in a few minutes trying to uh, <laughs> trying to say hi. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, so what was that process like? I, I saw some pictures when you guys were brewing that. You were actually adding ice cream into the mash or into the boil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was uh, – we, we threw that into the mash. Um, oh, in the mash? Yeah. It was uh, – it was – you know, we're just trying new things, you know, throw some stuff up against the wall, see if it sticks. It's tasting good. But, uh, you know, any opportunity to get ice cream in front of me, it, I'm all about it. So I like that idea. <laughs> exactly. Well, at least you're honest about that. You know, oh, people, yeah. who, people who are brewing with like fried chicken in their mash aren't saying the reason that they're doing it is because they like fried chicken. You know, they're trying to tell some kind of crazy story. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now that the whole reason that whole collab started was my love of ice cream. Uh, yeah, I used to sit down and eat ice cream with my dog every every night, and that's what gave me this uh, this body. But uh, my endocrinologist probably doesn't like that too much, but it's the truth. And I love beer and ice cream, so it was I took up the opportunity to put the two together. And, it's tasting pretty good right now. So definitely come by and pick up some four packs. So does that build some opportunities for you guys to have kind of an ongoing collaborative relationship with them and see maybe ice creams featuring your products in them or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they uh, just got a, uh, they're getting a uh, ice cream truck. So we're really looking forward to the ice cream truck. <laughs> At least I'm really looking forward to the ice cream truck being set up outside of the room. It, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we got, you know, we, we love working with them. They're great guys. And uh, they've got a couple new places that they're working on and ice cream trucks popping up all over Anne Arundel County. So uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, options for the future. Very cool. Uh, and before we move on to the next beer, uh, Jason wants to know if you guys are having food out tonight. So tonight, so there's this new uh, underground pop-up called – uh, ghost house cheesesteaks and they're located somewhere in gambrels i'm not sure where but they're just uh, they're offering five dollars off every order for everyone who orders from firm today and uh my cheesesteak just got delivered uh right when this started so i'll be looking forward to grabbing that as soon as this is over but they are awesome cheesesteaks great wings and uh, check them out, uh, ghosthousecheesesteaks.com. And uh, they're just doing like a, a pop-out, quote-unquote, somewhere in Gambrels. So we don't know where they are, but we're glad they're here. 
So what are you doing? Are you placing an order with them and they're going to deliver it to the guest at your place? Yep. Yeah, you just scan, scan the QR code, go on the website. We've got uh, $5 coupons and menus on all of our tables and at the bar, and uh, they just come and bring it right in. So That's awesome. It's, it's the first time we've uh, done this, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, I know one thing is everyone is really, really – happy with their food. So that's a good start. Just like, you know, with us, all you have to do is have really good food or really good beer and it'll sell itself. Well, one of your food trucks a couple of weeks ago caught my eye. And uh, if I didn't have plans tomorrow morning, I was going to be making the uh, journey to you because I really want to get out and try Catalyst hot dogs. Oh, my boy, Chris at Catalyst, this guy. So he, uh, he came, you know, I, I forget how I, I reached out to a lot of food trucks at the beginning um, and I got linked up with catalyst and this guy shows up a um, little backstory. Uh, before I started this, uh, my family owns and operates all of the wholesaling and distributing for Martin's potato rolls for a lot of Maryland. And I ran a bread route for 20 years selling Martin's potato rolls, and potato bread. So this guy shows up in this truck and he's got Schmidt's potato rolls, which is just like, I was like, no. So I called my mom, who also lives in Crofton. Our, where, our warehouse is in Crofton. She went down to the warehouse, came back with 20 bags of Martins, said, here you go. You sell Martins now. And we hooked him up. And now he only deals with Martins and only sells the best buns on the best dogs. And he's going to be here tomorrow. And uh, we're doing something with him that we're really excited about, uh, uh uh, Catalyst and Firm, we're buying 10 and Catalyst is buying 10 hot dogs and we're donating them to the first 10 first responders and first 10 teachers that come up here. Just come get your free hot dog as a thank you for all your support growing up, you know, and around here, all the teachers that that got me to this point. I can't even say that with a straight face. Uh, all, all of our friends. I want to thank teachers. all my teachers by raining hot dogs on you. <laughs> yeah, and all our first responders. You know, there's there's usually uh, a teacher, uh, a cop, a firefighter, a paramedic in this brewery at all times, and we love their support and we want to give back to them. So. You know, there's 20 hot dogs waiting for you guys tomorrow. We open uh, at noon. Uh, come and get them. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Chris, Chris and I actually had some dialogue last night. I noticed his post about uh, somebody donating some dogs to first responders in Silver Spring. And I reached out when I realized he was saying that nobody came to claim them. I was like, what can I do to help let people know that you'll be there? Because I think that that's pretty cool that his guest did that and that he was uh, interested in matching. So uh, best of luck to him. I can't wait to have my schedule line up with his schedule at firm so I can uh, come out there and support both. Yeah. Teams. Yeah. We've got them on the schedule the next three, excuse me, the next three Saturdays. Um, we love having him here and everyone loves having him here. And uh, it's been a while since we've had him out. So I'm definitely looking forward to a little uh, fried onions, chili cheese. It's all I need. Well, your affinity for uh, ice cream is only matched by my affinity for tubed meat served on bread. So um, it is I definitely – nice. I've heard great things, and all the pictures I've seen from him look great. So I wanted to give him a shout-out because I, I learned about him through you, and I'm, I'm waiting with, with uh, a salivating uh, appreciation to get, to get there and try his hot dogs. Yeah, it's funny because uh, the person who uh, started that donation thing – found out about him because I grew up with him, Chris Reagan, shout out. And I think it's so cool that it came full circle because I didn't know that. And I called Chris this morning and I'm like, Hey, like, I think that's awesome. What you did. We want to do that. We're, you know, we're buying 10 hot dogs. And he's like, so funny. You mentioned that because it wouldn't have happened if, you know, I, this guy, Chris found out about us through you so it's just cool to see everything come full circle and uh you know it, it happens all the time that you know someone comes out and they're and uh they're friends of us and they find out about you know 
Jerry Seafood or Catalyst, and then they end up going other places to get their food at other times. And we couldn't be happier to have the support for all of our food trucks. Earlier today, my wife and I were talking about uh, maybe going out to Pizza Boy on the uh, 13th. And I was like, oh, yeah, we should do this. We haven't been. It's like it's only an hour and a half drive. The kid can sleep in the car on the way. And then <laughs> she just popped up in the comments and said, our plan for the 13th now is to come see you and have hot dogs. <laughs> so you just want a good a good battle in our household. I mean, I love ice cream, but but pizza is life, man. I love pizza so much. And I'm if, if there's any pizza place, any – pizza trucks out there that want to come here and uh help with my uh ever-growing belly uh we would love to have you because pizza and beer is uh it's about as good as it gets for me and hot dogs chris and ice cream annapolis ice cream <laughs> our, our friend rob over at whitey's uh thinks that you should probably play some fish from uh your ice cream truck uh collaboration <laughs> as the music yeah what song would you pick? I don't know. <laughs> probably, probably some tweezer, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, oh, it's yeah. ice cream. We we've, we've got some uh, comments here about sounds like you're brewing in an animal shelter. They do have a doggy daycare right next door. <laughs> yes, and those dogs are rowdy. Yeah, they are. There's a lot of dogs next door. They're great though. They, it was, uh, it was the, fun watching parade by when we were there. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. You know, we've got a uh, uh, child daycare down at the end of the strip, then doggy daycare next door, and then we consider ourselves the adult daycare. So we're we're a full daycare. Comes, everybody's supervised. Oh yeah, definitely. So, so uh, let's talk about the last beer that you have up, and I think it's actually the beer that's in your glass right now. Oh yes, yeah the. Uh, uh, Secret of the Goza. So we've been doing. I love Gozas. Uh, my love for Goza uh, stemmed from uh, Westbrook, um, and I, I was like, we got to do Gozas. But everyone's doing four and a half, five and a half percent Gozas. I'm like, Henry, can you make a double Goza? And in typical Henry fashion, he's like, absolutely. And went back there and made what is my favorite Goza of all time. Uh, Disco Cherry Lime. It's uh, sitting at 8%. Drinks like a four. It's one of those gozas that you float down the river drinking all day, and then you get off the river like, well, that was an 8%, wasn't it? So uh, we're just going to keep pumping them out. This is uh, our next one. This is a Guava Double Goza, also sitting at 8%, and our brand-new stemless glassware, also uh, from our friends uh, Brand My Beverage, ACS, that you guys are getting all your glasses made from. Uh, just pumped out a bunch of new ones. This uh, this one's from Maddie at uh, Other Side, but uh, yeah, that those double gozes, man. I could drink those all summer long. That uh, that Metro Pilsner glass is one of my favorite glasses. It is the best. Yeah, the, um, uh, Maddie from Other Side. This is all he will drink beer out of the entire time here. He's got no very good taste. That, that was the favorite glass that I brought into the brewery where I was uh, a couple of years ago. When we brought that in, people just looked at it and they're like, man, that is fascinating. It's just a great shape. Yeah, we got one here for you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what you guys have coming up in the, in the next couple of weeks. Like, What are some big uh, releases that aren't going to be exclusive to members that you guys are kind of working on or are excited about? So, yeah, we just got our canning line. So that's huge. Uh, we've been dialing that thing in. It's a, it's a beast. And uh, we just got our labeler in. It was delayed. So uh, we're, we're messing with that thing and getting that thing all dialed in as well. Uh, so we're looking to put out um, about a can a week once we get everything kind of, you know, smooth. Um, we will be putting that mallow out that, uh, rise up, uh, marshmallow stout in the cans. And, uh, we will also be putting dismal fog that we brewed our double IPA in the cans. Uh, right now we still have some it's ice left and we have, uh, scooped and then, uh, we will be releasing a small amount of the guava in cans. We, uh, we're dialing it in, and so we got a small amount of that. So uh, 
uh, stay tuned to our social for when that's going to drop. Um, we've got a uh, Henry just brewed another Marzen. Um, everyone's loving his Marzins, and for good reason. It's really cool to see, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of the other industry and brewers come in here and everyone we had like five different brew teams in the back at one time and they're like uh henry this marzen is effing delicious like whatever you're doing keep this on so uh we got another one of those in the tanks um we will be doing a uh our next in our it's ice line will be a key lime pie it's ice we'll be putting that in cans as well and uh yeah we'll just just pumping out hazies and sours. That's what pays the bills. You know, we got, uh, Oh, uh, Henry will also be brewing that, uh, we heavy that him and his father, Charlie, uh, brew every year on the big system too. I'm really excited to, to be a part of that because I love working with his father, um, and, and seeing them two interact together. That's actually where, uh, Charlie's hot picks our first can that, we released and that's uh, inspired by Charlie and his uh, he's an uh, old grateful dead taper trader. So he always had uh, like thousands of tapes in the basement and uh, you know, we kind of designed the label of hot picks off of uh, the old dead Dick's picks albums. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, shout out to Charlie and uh, his affinity for, you know, combining music and beer. He's also uh, an avid home brewer. And, uh, yeah, that's about, uh, that's about all we really got in the works right now I can think of. I'm sure we got some other stuff I forgot. So uh, as an avid fan of, of Fish uh, and the Grateful Dead, I really appreciate the things that you're doing there. I actually am wearing a, a nice lock tee that I thought you would appreciate. It's Let me the, see it. The fluff had one tipsy fuddle oh. dude, and elevated. Oh, uh, spoiler alert! That might be uh, tipsy fuddled as a stout, and then uh, barrel aids boozy groggy. Nice. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I like what you got going on there. That's fun. Maybe so, maybe not. <laughs> so I was going to ask how you're able to. Uh, blend this passion for music that you guys share with the naming that you need for beers because you guys are doing a wonderful job like disco cherry lime like as soon as i saw that i'm like i haven't thought of marcy's playground since like i don't know 1998 maybe <laughs> yeah yeah i bought that single on tape <laughs> i had that in a in a in a yellow like cl closable uh sport walkman i remember that so yeah oh yeah yeah, I still have my grandfather's sport walkman. Yeah, I, yeah, we love music. So any chance we can get to, uh, you know, combine some stupid lyrics and, uh, you know, just kind of, it's kind of, it's funny because you get the people that come in that, you know, they get it and, uh, you know, and then other people that would just have, you know, no idea that, you know, uh, like Dismal Fog is, is a lyric from punch you in the eye from fish, you know, but so it's cool to see who the fam is and, and we're having fun with it. Um, we, you know, we love, we grew up on those bands and, uh, and we really can't wait to have music in here. That's the big thing that we want to start next is, uh, is music. Uh, we're working on acoustic treatments cause it is loud in here, but, um, we're working on that and the stage and a little nice little curtain backdrop, curtain with backdrop. And uh, once uh, once we can trust everyone to sit down in their seats with their mask without music, then it'll be okay. We, because, I mean, I want to, if I'm watching music, I want to stand up and dance. And it's, it's, it's a tough line because you want people to be up and dancing, but the county doesn't. So, we as soon as we can have music, promise you we will, and we will be supporting all of our local friends that are musicians. Uh, Ryan, our tap room manager, uh, who we met, he worked at Heavy Seas with Henry, local musician. Uh, Ryan Keith, music on Insta, and uh, Henry. I mean, we've got. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> we got, you know, guitars and ban you banjo on the wall. You know, we love music. So we will uh we will be pushing out a lot of fun shows. We can't wait to get into working festivals and we really want to be a part of all local festivals because that's where I feel that you make you make great bonds with people over music and beer. And that's where I've met the majority of my friends. If, when people come in here and, you know, they're like, oh, how do you know Billy? It's like fish, like music, eight by 10, you know? So we're trying to, we're tr we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're all crossing our fingers and just waiting patiently for everything to kind of come back to what we can consider to be normal and and be able to do all the things that we all love to do you and i had a talk last night about you know as soon as we can have festivals again we will be having festivals again and you guys will be there so don't worry about that absolutely, absolutely. i know you're chomping at the bit to get out there and and be in front of the public with with what firms bring into the table and i think that you guys have uh have a really good reason to be excited about that yeah, yeah. John just ch chimed in, one of our uh, good regulars, about uh, any ex plans for expansion for the Shakedown Street Beer Garden with the weather warming up. And uh, yes, we are in talks with our landlord. Uh, we have a great relationship with our landlord. Uh, they own the property. They own the building. They did our build out. Their headquarters across the street. They love our beer. Shout out, Reliable. And uh, we're in talks with doing a, if you've been into the tap room, just a big wrap around outdoor, like kind of flow from indoor to outdoor with a big glass roll up uh, garage door and uh, get some more, uh, some more butts and seats outside where it's safe and beautiful weather. We're, wa we're the only waterfront brewery in uh, Anne Arundel County. Sorry, sorry forward. Sorry, Cam. But uh, we got a uh, lake firm out here. This is, uh, I was gonna say that's a that's a real big reach for waterfront property, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it might be. There's a, a water like, feature. Uh, there's a water feature overflow. separating you from a neighborhood count. <laughs> yeah, it might be an overflow from the golf course, but whatever. We came over that bridge because we came yeah. in from that side, and, and Chelsea, my wife, is like, "Oh man, could you have picked a better way to come in here?" And I'm like, "No, this is the fun." <laughs> I really want that to turn into like a nice covered bridge so we can have the only covered bridge in Maryland by a, by a brewery. There you go. Um, very cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time this afternoon. How can people keep up with firm and uh, learn everything that's going on there and uh, learn about what you guys are doing? Yeah. Um, we are pretty, pretty on top of social when it comes to uh, Facebook and Insta. That's where you find out everything. Um, Hit us up on there uh, at Firm Brewing. And uh, all of our membership stuff is on firmbrewing.com. And please reach out to us on Insta and Facebook. And, uh, you know, if the, if you're really interested in getting those barrel-aged beers, I highly suggest signing up to, soon because uh, I, I'm going to go sell one right now. And uh, we're going to sell a lot of them coming up. As soon as people try these barrel aged beers, they're going to be sold out after the first bottle. I guarantee it. So if that's something that you're interested to in and, you know, you have faith in us. I mean, people had faith enough in us to vote for us to, uh, to the Sweet 16. I would have uh, faith in us to make some good barrel aged beers, especially after Henry's experience. Uh, they had a big you know, he's done a lot of bottles in his uh, decade experience and he's doing an absolute wonderful job. And once again, he wishes he could be here and he really wants to thank everyone, especially all everyone at BAM and all the breweries that have helped us along the way. But uh, he's got to keep brewing the beer in the back to keep you guys uh, happy. So he's he's back there crushing out that uh, that opening day orange. Uh, Orange and vanilla, sour. Uh, shout out, Mo Gabba. Uh, don't take it personally, but even when I was there, Henry was buried in his work and couldn't come out. I don't think Billy lets him out of the brewery. I think that's really what's happening. <laughs> he got he's him. He got him. He's too busy to deal with you, man. Yeah, yeah. Even even with his uh, wife Mari here, he's still uh, 
needs to be told, all right, go it's, home, play with the girls. It's time for you to leave, man. Well, yeah. it's awesome that you have a great business partner and that you guys are doing great things. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on this afternoon. I know you guys are busy and everybody's all hands on deck there. So thanks for giving me an hour of your time. Absolutely, um, man. I am curious how much of that barrel aged beer is going to go to your bots. So you and I can talk about that later. Uh, Absolutely. And then, uh, other than that, if you're tuning in this afternoon or you're tuning in at some point in the future and you had a great time chatting with us and listening to this talk, thank you very much for uh, being here. Leave us some comments. Go follow Firm. Find out what they're up to. And uh, I'm going to pull Billy and I out of the stream real quick or find a way to do this so that you can see these awesome glasses in the back. Nope, that's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> we've got some really great glassware for sale right now. Pre-order it. Pick it up at your favorite brewery. I'll run the thing on the bottom. Yeah, Firm's got great glasses. These aren't it. These aren't it. <laughs> but uh, down there at the bottom, if you would like to order any of the uh, hashtag MD beer glassware, uh, we did a great February talk with the two artists that supplied the artwork for these awesome glasses. Visit us at beerme, B-I-E-R-M-I dot com slash store slash BAM. The glasses are not expensive. 100% of the proceeds come back to the Brewers Association of Maryland. They help us help breweries like Firm get off the ground. They help us uh, get out there and advocate on behalf of the industry. They help us promote the industry and they help us put on kick-ass events. So once we can do that, we're going to need you guys to come out and support us. Since you can't do that right now, if you could uh, buy a glass or two, we would love you for that. Uh, Billy, right now. have a great weekend, man. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, everyone, for all your support. We love you and come see us. We're having fun. Cheers, brother. Yeah. What pairs well with awesome label art and delicious local beer? A great looking glass. These limited edition hashtag MD beer glasses are locally designed and decorated. Support Maryland's craft beer industry with each sip. All proceeds from the sale of these glasses directly benefit the Maryland craft beer industry and support the advocacy and promotional efforts of the Brewers Association of Maryland.